for any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check out G2A.com. And if you need any Ultimate Team coins, then head over to you, FIFA. The code CHEZ will get you a discount on both sites, and all links are down below. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 19 of the Liverpool career mode here on FIFA 15. We start again with a cup game. Yesterday it was QPR in the Capital One Cup semi-final. Today it's a replay against Crystal Palace away from home after that incredible 3-3 draw at Anfield a couple of days ago. Now Baratelli scored a hat-trick in uh, the game against Crystal Palace in the first uh, particular attempt to try and knock them out of the FA Cup. He then scored a hat-trick yesterday against Aston Villa, but today, unfortunately, finds himself dropped for this one, and uh, Rene Adler makes his debut, as you can see, in goal. The German is coming to replace Simon Mignolet, who's gone out to uh, Paris Saint-Germain for £22 million. And, of course, Morgan Schneidlin made his debut yesterday as well. With the fixes coming thick and fast right now, playing weekend and midweek every single week at the minute, with uh, Premier League games at the weekend and a cup game every single midweek for the past three weeks so it's going to be really really hectic like I said yesterday really tough on the squad but hopefully we should have the depth and ability in the depth and strength in the depth to be able to cope with all of the fixtures we are in good form right now picking up wins in the league we were able to beat QPR in the cup yesterday as well I'm hoping finally to actually beat Crystal Palace scores like the like we said the first attempt to beat them in the first not the first round because it's uh, in the third round I believe in the uh, FA Cup right now, but in the first game against them, we drew 3-3, and of course, earlier on in the league in the season, we lost 2-0 here at Selhurst Park, so we definitely know what uh, sort of threats they can bring to us, but we did take the lead here on the hour mark, thanks to a rifling shot from Daniel Sturridge. Spironi had made a couple of good saves earlier on in the game, but Studge was not to be denied his goal, and actually steals it off then here, with Damian Delaney trying to uh, take his time at the back. Coutinho races through, surely he's case of just slotting it, no, Spironi with another good save, and again gets back to make the second and Daniel Sturridge is denied and we aren't able to seal the game out with a 2-0 lead five minutes from time. Now we're into stoppage time almost here. Hesse racing down the left-hand side, brought him off the bench to try and add some extra pace. Exactly what he does here. Stands the ball up. Daniel Sturridge finally has his second and our second of the game and we are at the second attempt going to be able to beat Crystal, or third attempt if you count all competitions, able to beat Crystal Palace and go through to the fourth round of the FA Cup. So We've got the second leg of the semi-final of the Capital One Cup to come on Monday against QPR. Unfortunately, though, in that game against Palace in the snow, Raheem Sterling picked up an injury and he's going to be out for three weeks with a sprained ankle, which ordinarily wouldn't be too much of an issue, but with the amount of fixtures we're having right now, every single three or four days we've got a game at the minute, and it's been the case for the past two or three weeks in game, then uh, that might cause me a few uh, a few headaches in a couple of weeks' time. Right now, though, for this Sunderland game, we are able to rotate well enough and be able to field a, a fully rotated 11 and actually not have too many issues with uh, the players that we're having to bring in. So everyone's fit for this game. Balotelli's back in. Of course, like we say, he scored two back-to-back -back hat tricks, six goals in the previous two games for him. So we're hoping for another top performance from him. And of course, Sunderland, we do know all about them from the My Player series. We've since moved on, but they definitely are a, uh, a tough side to play against, especially at home. But again, confirmation then, as you can see, that he's a rotation side. Although Sacco, the first team uh, centre-back, is playing alongside uh, Dejan Lovren, who has struggled for us so far this season. And his days at the club, I think, for him are actually numbered and I'm thinking about selling him on in the summer and bringing in a top quality replacement but Schneiderlin here the new signing is involved immediately sends Balotelli through incredible feet and then a terrible attempted save from Pantillamon Balotelli has another goal that's seven goals now in his last three appearances the man is unstoppable right now I keep dropping him for Daniel Sturridge in the first team but surely it's only a matter of time before I pluck the courage to put Balotelli in ahead of Daniel Sturridge but unfortunately it wasn't long before we were back on level terms Jack Rodwell puts them uh, back into the uh, into the game with a goal then really nice finish across the goalkeeper into the uh, far top corner Balotelli nice little back heel there to Joe Allen then he does get to the ball eventually despite running into the back of the referee Balotelli played down the channel not really two men busting a gut to get in the box here and there's so many Sunderland defenders back that Balotelli has to go it alone again and he scores again. I can't quite believe this, and neither can he. You can see from the, from the celebration, he just waving his head to the side. What is going on? Eight goals in his past three games now for Mario Balotelli. Hesse here has the shot in the box, but Coates gives him a cheeky little nudge in the back as he takes the shot, and the referee deems it enough of a foul to, uh, to give us a penalty. You can see Coates there with his rather dodgy Leonardo da Vinci uh, Assassin's Creed style facial hair, but Hesse wins the penalty. Of course, with Balotelli in the squad, he's going to be the man to take it. 
and the chance to score, I, I still can't quite believe this is going to happen. Mario Balotelli has the chance to score three hat-tricks in three games. Can Pantillamon keep it out? He gets there, but there's too much power on the penalty. Nine goals in three games for Mario Balotelli. I, I have to start playing him in the first team, don't I? I, there's no way Daniel Sturridge could, but still Daniel Sturridge is scoring goals, he scored two against Palace in the previous game, both of my strikers are giving me an absolute headache here, I don't know who to pick, Balotelli's going on another amazing run here, sets up Lalana. we're close to a fourth, it nutmegs Pantilimon, almost comes off the inside of his knee, hits the bar and goes up and out, and unfortunately for us we aren't able to extend the lead, but I made the two changes, took off Sacco because he was a little bit tired from playing in the previous game, and Antonio Rudiger came on, plus a change in the midfield again, uh, Patrick Van Aanholt though is eventually going to be able to get in a really good cross here skimming very very low just too high for the defenders to get onto but Ricky Alvarez gets up very well indeed and scores an extremely good header you don't see many headers of that sort in uh, FIFA these days and that was a really good header rising above the defenders and I'm not really too sure why it gave us the goal decision system here because it was quite clearly two or three feet over the line but uh, Mattia Perrin actually dived through the post whilst trying to save this one so he tried his best bless him actually defied the laws of physics to, uh, to try and get on the end of it, couldn't quite do so, and Pantinamon defies the laws of physics here with that save. Do you remember Gordon Banks and Pele, that infamous header? That is pretty much similar, headed towards the bottom corner, it's beyond Pantinamon when he dives backwards, and somehow he manages to get a big hand to it and keep it out, but we do win the game, thanks again to Mario Balotelli. Three goals for him for the third game running, and we get three points in the Barclays Premier League. Now, I am looking to bring in, with the rest of my transfer money, a wing-back and move out both Jose Enrique and Glenn Johnson, because we have a abundance of uh, average wing-backs at the minute. I want to move both of them out and bring in a, a, not necessarily a world-class wing-back, but uh, someone that is definitely of uh, Premier League standard and decent Premier League standard. So we're looking at Kieran Gibbs. Not sure whether Arsenal will let him go, but he is in poor form, so it might be worth having a pop at uh, putting a bid in for him and having a look also at Alexandro here as well. And again, trying to uh, offer one of those two players, Glenn Johnson or Jose Enrique, as make weight for the deal. I probably prefer Alexandro, but obviously if we could weaken Arsenal and strengthen ourselves by getting Kieran Gibbs, then that might be preferable. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see what happens with that because the transfer deadline day will come in the next episode I think on Monday I think we've only got one game left in this month but as you can see our good form has risen us up to sixth in the league and we are now only two points away from Manchester City in fourth but you can see how well Crystal Palace have been playing this year so there's no surprise we keep struggling against them but we were able to get ourselves through to the next round of the FA Cup today thanks to those two goals from Daniel Sturridge. Arsenal down in ninth really struggling so far this year but uh, hopefully they can stay down there and we can continue to push further up the table. Chelsea on top right now with a game in hand and already six points clear. But as we've seen in real life, those points clear at the top can always tumble away and it won't be long until there's a side level with them. But that is going to bring today's episode to a close, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Check the channel page for anything you may have missed over the past few days. Drop this video a like if you enjoyed it as well, of course. And subscribe if you haven't already. We are closing in on 43,000 subscribers. That would be fantastic if we could hit that that at some point over the weekend I think it's still a way off but uh, who knows what can happen over the weekends the uh, the views and the growth always seems to go up at, uh, at weekends when you guys aren't at school or work but uh, of course we'll uh, have more videos tonight we'll have a, a what is it Friday we'll have a career mode road to glory episode for you tonight and uh, of course there was my player last night as well so feel free to check the channel page for either of those two series or this one if you missed anything over the past few days and of course as well in the description you'll find links to my twitter to my Facebook, to my Instagram, and to my Twitch channel. And probably, considering it's Friday night, I'll be streaming tonight as well. Not confirming anything here, because I'm recording this in advance, and it's actually uh, Wednesday when I'm recording this commentary, so I don't know whether I'll be uh, streaming or not. But I will confirm or deny any rumours of streams on Twitter, so definitely follow me there as well. But that will bring today's video to a close. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.